Hey, what's up, guys? This is Foster from English No Kudu. Part of my voice, I am under the weather today. But I just wanted to tell you really quick while Alexia is talking to some Portuguese cats and an old Portuguese man about Cambly. So, Cambly is an online platform where you can find English teachers live 24 7. It's pretty incredible. Honestly, just English teachers at the click of a button. If this existed in Portuguese, my mind would be blown. You can take classes in the car. You can take classes when you're walking. You can take classes of 15 minutes or of one hour. It is one of the coolest things I've seen in the language learning market in a long, long time. So just go to Cambly.com or download the Cambly app on your iPhone, Android, whatever, and use the code EnglishNewCru to get your first class for free. Okay, on um, with the show. Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês do inglês do inglês do rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. Hello, hello, Alexia. How are you doing? Hi, I'm happy. You're happy? Yes. Why? I'm exhausted. Because I'm not hurting anymore. My tongue is not hurting me anymore. Yeah, so I didn't want to tell you this because you were hurting, but every time you say the word tongue, eu sou schwa. Então é t- uh, tongue. Tongue. Yeah, you were saying tongue. Tank. Yeah, so just try to relax your lips. This is the most common and relaxed sound in English. Tongue. Tongue. One more time. Tongue. Tongue. Fun. Huh? Fun. Fun. Sun. Sun. Okay, are you ready to have some fun today? <laughs> cool. So, Alexia, yesterday we talked about the T sound. We talked about the true T and the flap T. Do you want me to give you a quick revision or do you want to tell me about them? You can give a quick revision, no problem <laughs> at all. Espercinha. Okay, so the true T is the traditional T sound that people think about and it normally occurs at the beginning of words just like time, tom, take, etc. But in English we produce the sound with the tip of our tongue, a pontinha da linguinha, da linguinha. So, we're saying t t t right? Mm-hmm. Then we also have the flap T. So, that is the sound that sounds more like a D, honestly. But for Portuguese speakers, for Brazilians, you can think of this sound like a Brazilian R. Like para, puro. Right? Yeah. Do you remember the phrase I taught you yesterday? Political party. Ooh, nice. I wasn't thinking about that. That is a good one. <laughs> Um, I was thinking about got a lot of butter. Yeah, got a lot of butter. Perfect, perfect. So today we're diving even deeper into the T sound, and we're going to talk about the stop T and the silent T, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so we have this crazy thing in English that linguistic people call the stop T. But really, it is just when we have a T and we almost make the T sound, everything is in position, we're ready to go, and then we don't make it. Can you think of any examples of this? Fountain. Okay, kind of. Alexia is obsessed with fountain <laughs> because she watched an Instagram video of me talking about fountains. <laughs> it's an easy guess for me. Okay, let me ask you a simple question. The dogs are barking. And 
that <laughs> oh, a recording podcast with 11 dogs was not but the best idea. But only two are barking. Yeah. Moi and Bohemia, so. I think it's fine. And our listeners are just going to have to deal with it. Because if you don't like dogs, this is the wrong podcast for you. Okay, so Alexia, let me ask you a really simple question. You ready? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Do you understand? What? Yeah. So it's a silent T. Yeah. Think about this. Every time when you say something to me and I don't understand, I say what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying what. No, I what? If I say what, that is very peculiar in English. That is not common. And if I really articulate that T sound, it is like I am demonstrating something like disbelief or I'm so surprised. Like, what? What in the world? But normally, in normal conversation, all Americans will just say, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Another example where I see this a lot is but. Yeah, but you have to used, explain mm -hmm. if it's but or but. Yeah, we're not talking about boom this year. <laughs> Hi, Hexia. <laughs> what? If people say but, is uh, uh, okay. but but. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to avoid yesterday. We were trying to talk about teas and we ended up talking about farting. <laughs> Today, I'm trying to talk about teas, and immediately Alexia goes. Back but it's to the important. But. Imagine people saying but every time that they want to say but. Okay, so you can say but, like for mice, with a T. But it, but <laughs> it, it completely depends on the context. So normally when I see the silent T with but, it's like, but what are you talking about? You know, like my sh keys, you know, like, but what are we doing right now? And that's where the silent T comes on. But if I'm saying, for example, hmm, when you are studying English, you really need to focus on pronunciation, but you also need to focus on listening. In that case, I am articulating the T and it's a true T. Okay. But what's the difference? Just the way that you're talking and the Just message that you want to... Stress and intonation. Normally, if you want to sound more formal or informal? No. No. It does not have anything to do with formality. It has to do with stress. So, if I say, but I want to go to the beach today, this means that it's correct. But if I say, but I want to go to the beach today, that's okay as well. Yeah, so honestly, I think the second say. one is a lot more natural. Something that I see a lot of my students do is they over-articulate this T sound, and it's fine. It just sounds a little unnatural. If they say, what? Sorry, I did not understand what. It just, it sounds like too much, you know? Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're so surprised or something. Do I do that? No. <laughs> no, seriously, because I never pay attention because, I mean, I learned that you have to pronounce all the sounds to make it clear what you want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, you do that. You do that a good bit. Another good example of this is in Portugal. Until about two days ago, how was the weather, Alexia? Hot. Ah. Yeah. So you can say hot. <laughs> And you said it with a true T, and that's okay. But, for example... It was really hot. Last time I talked to my mom, she's like, how's the weather? You know, my mom <laughs> don't know what to talk about. Hey, oh, honey, how's the weather? It's so hot. Yeah. It's so hot here. Right? Yeah. I'm just thinking. <laughs> now I am analyzing inside my head without yeah. telling you guys. Without... Yeah. Without. Without. Yeah. Almost always you can drop this final T <laughs> and sound more natural. You can use the T or you can do without it. Without it. <laughs> you hear that? Without it. Yeah. I'm not saying a T there. That's a stop T. 
My tongue is in the same position, but I'm not aspirating, which means I'm not doing t t t. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if someone says, is this correct? Another example, <laughs> is this correct? And I could say, no, it's not. No, it's not. Or no, I could not. say, no, it's not. Do you hear the difference between those two? Yeah. Like, no, it's not like that. The way that you say, like, with the T and everything like this, it sounds so British for me. Uh, It could sound British. To me, it sounds very exaggerated, a yeah. little more dramatic. But that's why. Yeah. So just something to think about that we drop that final T sound a lot of the times in English. Okay? Okay. Okay. Step number two with the stop T is we see this sound a lot when you have a T sound after an R or an L or an N. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, for example, Alexia, could you tell me what is the word for passer in English? Partner. One more time. Partner. Yeah. Did you say partner? No, partner. Partner. Yeah. No T. What about partly? Partly? Mm-hmm. Partly. What's that? Sorry. Uh, a part of something like, oh, it's partly cloudy today. Ah, oh, wow. This is a super formal word. What? Partly cloudy? No. <laughs> we hear that on the Weather Channel all the time. <laughs> it's not that formal. <laughs> How about the word for apartment? Apartment. One more time. Apartment. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. What about department? Department. Mm, one more time. Department. Yeah. So I say apartment. Oh, Bruna's got a nice new apartment. Right? I'm saying apartment. Department. I'm not saying department. Department. Or, yeah. I need to go to the, I don't know, uh, interior design department. That sounds so strange. Yeah, depart, no, department. Yeah, this is a really difficult sound for people because they're just so used to producing that T sound and it sounds like you're stopping something. But for native English speakers, it comes so naturally. So if you just start with easy words like, okay, first I can say hot and then I can say hot. So say that with me. Hot. Say hot. 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 What were you eating when you bit your tongue? Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we also see this in some words with sports, like basketball. Basketball. Yeah. I want to ask Juan Marcus, our friend who loves basketball, <laughs> who has been on the podcast. Most Brazilians will say, I love basketball. Yeah. That sounds ridiculous. Uh, uh, basketball. Até porque a gente fala basquete. We have this, yeah. so basketball. Yeah. So when I was in university, I played a lot of racquetball. Did you? Mm-hmm. Racquetball is what again? Uh, I don't know if you have it in Brazil. You probably do. Um, you're like in an indoor court, and it's kind of like tennis, and you just smack a ball against a wall. Yeah, with another person yeah. next to you, and he, I'm so afraid of that. Oh, it's really fun. Uh, so fun that the ball comes directly to your eye. And it's, <laughs> it's one of the weird, just a quick tangent for our listeners. When I was a young child, I was very good at sports. I was very athletic. And then for some reason, when I started growing up, I lost all of my athletic capacity and talent. But for some reason, racquetball, <laughs> I'm still a damn good racquetball player. And golf. No, I was very good at golf when I'm young. And you don't need to tell the story about golf. That is for another time, <laughs> another place. Okay, Alexia, let's think of other words after an R. For example, certain. S sir what? Certain. Certain. Mm, no. What's that? So are you sure? Are you totally sure? Are you 100% uh, are certain? Are you certain? Certain. Certain. Almost. You're saying, sir, everything in your mouth is in place to make the tea, and you don't. And you just say in. 
Saradin. Saradin. Pretty good. Pretty good. What about the word fitness? Fitness. Yeah. I'm not saying fitness. Eu sou muito fit. Yeah, I'm not saying... Um, oh. And you will move fitness. And you would say, oh, look at that guy. He's really fit. Fit. Yeah. I'm not saying he's really fit. Or you can always say um, for clo clothes. It fits. Yeah. But when you say it fits... You are actually making more of a T sound. It's, I know. Yeah. And a quick tip, something that I have told Alexia many times and she is still not learning, is with the word close, when you're talking about hopa. It's hard to remember this. Close. close. You don't have to say the TH. Yeah. Right. Close. So close, like hopa, and close, like fisha portha, same thing. Yeah, close. We write it differently, but here at English No Guru, we don't worry about writing <laughs> because English writing doesn't make sense, okay? Okay. Another really common example of the stop T outside. Ah, outside. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So any word with out and then something else, um, like outdoors. Outdoors. Yeah. Just another thing. Okay, so a small rant. Brazilians use a lot of English words in Portuguese, and that's totally fine. You know, a lot of times it makes sense when you say Facebook, when you say, ah, eu tenho um call, alguma coisa assim. It's faz sentido para mim. Mas outdoor. Vocês falam billboard, right? Billboard. Yeah, billboard. Out, outdoor, but I, I don't know how to explain this. Outdoors, I won't even try. Outdoors for me is outside of the house in ah, no ar livre. You are free. You are outdoors. It has nothing to do with marketing or a big sign or anything like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So before I get too angry, let's finish with at last. At the last. Yeah. At last. So, we are saying at last. Pelo menos. That would be at least. I am. Another good example, at least. At least. Yeah. If I'm really articulating, I say at least. We don't have to go to the mall today. But normally, I say, eh, at least we don't have to go to the mall today. At least. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we just eat that sound. Right? Okay. Right. Does that make sense to you? Yes. It... Do, you, do you feel more comfortable with the stop T? I have to practice a lot. Now, everything that I'm thinking, I'm thinking if I had to pronounce the T or not. Yeah. yeah. Right now, I just said not. Right. So, a lot of these new sounds or these are things that most people, most people don't teach phonetics. So, when you learn something like, oh, every time I'm saying what... And that sounds really weird for Americans. Most of my students have this mental crisis, like this panic attack, and they're thinking about it all the time. But you don't need to do that. You just need to train a lot and say, what? What? It's hot. No, 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 it's not. Outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So don't freak out. Just train and sign up for sound school on September 12th. True. Sure. That is it, my friends. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, guys. If you are still listening to the show, first, congratulations. That means that you are serious about improving your English. And if you are really serious and dedicated about your English, then you need to check out our completely new version of Sound School. It is a totally personalized pronunciation and speaking course that we have literally been working on for years. We are opening up the course on September 12th and there are only 50 spots available because we work with everyone personally. If you like this show, Sound School will be perfect for you. É exatamente isso que o Foster falou. Vamos abrir as inscrições para o nosso curso Sound School no dia 12 de setembro e é para quem quer levar a sério a pronúncia 
eu speaking. Mas como as vagas são limitadas, tem que correr. A gente trabalha com cada aluno pessoalmente e isso demanda muito da nossa atenção, tempo, dedicação, enfim. E é claro que a gente quer que vocês tenham a melhor experiência possível. É só entrar no nosso site www.inglesionicro.com e se inscrever tanto para receber as novidades quanto para saber mais sobre o curso e não perder essa super chance de fazer parte da família Inglês no Icru. Espero te ver por lá. And as always, keep up the good fight and lose well.